So we'll start in a seated position, making sure that you're nice and comfortable here in whatever seated shape you're taking. That's we'll be here for a few minutes at the beginning of the class. So I'm not sure you may or may not have heard uh, the message that you're only as old as your spine feels, right? We can feel that you get up in the morning if you have that sort of a stiff or creaky spine, it really makes everything else seem to be a little bit harder to, um, to do throughout the day. You know, spine is so important running up through the center of the body. It houses the central nervous system. It's part of your axial skeleton, which then all of our limbs are connected to. And it's also the space of our nadi channel. So we have three nadi channels. Uh, we have our left channel, which is Ida Nadi. So that is your moon channel, or you can think about your feminine side. In its pure state, it's joy, love, and compassion. But when we get a little bit of out of balance through our Ida then it, we get that emotional attachment or guilt or feelings of low self-esteem. On the right side, we have Pingala Nadi, which is our actions and planning. And the same thing here, when that's out of balance, we can get that sort of egotistical attachment or arrogance and anger. So both of these channels, the Ida and the uh, Pingala, you could say they're kind of uh, part of the sympathetic nervous system. Both are related to some sort of action or emotion. Then we have our central channel. So our central channel, which is a power which sustains us and grows, guiding us to our higher self. And it's also our central channel would be the balance of both sides. So you can imagine if there's any sort of that uh, tightness or tension through the spine, it's almost it's going to reflect itself in imbalances through the rest of the body, and all of our chakras sit through that central channel. So we'll bring our hands down onto our knees, just allowing the natural breath to flow in and out of your body. And each inhale might just bring a little bit more length and space through the body. And each exhale, the shoulders can roll back and down. And the option to invite some ujjayi breathing here with the constriction through your throats as you continue to inhale and exhale through your nose. As we work into a more active breath, we start to create more support through the body. So as we inhale, we're expanding through abdomen, diaphragm, and through the ribs and lungs. And on the exhale, we're creating the contraction or the activation of those muscles. Now, our core muscles play a massive role in the support of the spine. We'll we start to bring a little movement here through the spine, flexions and extensions of your seated cow and cat. Start that right at the base of the tailbone, scooping the tailbone back as you bring the abdomen forward, shoulders rolling back, heart lifting to the sky as you inhale. And then on the exhale, tailbone scoops, belly button draws to the spine, using the hands on the knees to really round the spine and bend the back all the way, chin to chest. We'll take three more of these, inhale, coming forward. Exhale back. So lots of concentration on the spinal movement through this class. Opening it up on all angles one more time. Inhale. Exhale. So from our flexions and extensions, we'll move into the side of the spine. We'll sweep the arms overhead. And on the exhale, bring your left hand down by your side and start to take a lean over towards the left side. So sit bones stay evenly anchored to the floor as you reach all the way over, opening up to the right side of your uh, ab or the torso. Imagine all the ribs separating here. We're shining those energy centers out through the side of the body, through your heart, through your solar plexus. We'll inhale all the way back up through center. Exhale, right hand comes down, left reaching. It's always nice to do a couple of rounds of these side bends because you might find there's a little more space 
available to you now on the second round through. So you inhale up through center. On the second time over, left hand comes down. You might even slide a little bit further this time. The forearm elbow can lower, provided that the sit bones stay anchored to the floor. And reach and lengthen up and down. All the way back up through center. And over to the right. Same thing here, if you'd like to slide the right arm a little further, bring the forearm and elbow down. And all the way back up. And from here, I'm going to bring left hand onto the right knee. And right hand's going to just gently rest on the back of the head. So this left elbow, it can float. If there's space, it can come down to the mat. On the inhale, sweep the right elbow high to the sky, so we'll take a twist. On the exhale, bring it down to the earth. Three more times. Inhale, lift open, twist. Exhale. Breathing in. Exhale. Last one. Inhale. Exhale. While we're folding forward, left hand comes onto your right shin, right hand onto the left shin. Begin to round the spine back into almost that seated uh, cat shape and keep the chin in towards the chest. Bring yourself all the way back to a seated shape. We're switching sides, right hand to the left knee, left hand to the back of the head. Inhale, lift and open. Exhale, bring it down. Right then. Exhale. Two more. And then again, we cross opposite hand to opposite shin, chin tucks to the chest, rounding back through the spine. You should feel a nice big stretch through the back of the shoulders here, upper spine, the thoracic. Now if we pull ourselves back up to a seated position, we're going to continue all the way over the knees into tabletop and we'll take four rounds of cow and cat. So hands below the shoulders, knees below the hips. Toes can be tucked or flattened, tops of feet to the floor. Inhale, lifting forward. Exhale, around the arch. In breath in. Exhale. Two more. Last one. Let's so briefly come back into tabletop and just notice how your spine is already beginning to feel. You might even like to play with some uh, natural movements here, whatever feels nice, rolling through the hips or rolling through the shoulders. And then if the toes aren't already tucked, we'll tuck them underneath, spreading the fingers nice and wide, perhaps even just shifting them a little further forward in the shoulders. As you press through the feet and lift the hips high to the sky into your downward facing dog, we'll take a moment here to walk out through the legs. And we'll settle back into stillness and downward facing dog. Float your right leg high to the sky, breathing in. Stepping the right foot through between the hands on the exhale. Left toes stay tucked as the knee lowers to the mat, arms sweeping to the sky. So checking the hips here, we'll square and level and we're activating, trying to squeeze the feet towards each other. We'll cactus the arms on the exhale, lifting the heart to the sky. Inhale, arms reach out wide to the side of the room. Side bend over to the right, right hand comes down, left hand overhead. Hips stay square, engage. Support, right hand might touch down, or if you like to a prop or some support, perhaps you have a block or something on the right side of the mat. Left arm keeps reaching up and overhead. And sweep both arms high to the sky, and hands coming down to the floor. Supported side plank, hands walking around the left side of the mat, swivel on the left knee and extend the right leg towards the front of the room. Left hand grounds, fingers spread wide, twist into the floor, 
rotate the heart to the sky. Getting that side opening here as we lift the top of the body, contract through the bottom. Maybe pressing the hips slightly forward, right arm reaching high. You can also reach up and overhead, lengthen all the way through the top of your body. Use the core here to bring yourself up through center, into gate pose, right hand down, the extended leg, left arm reaching overhead. We'll take both arms high to the sky and bringing them down to the long edge of the mat. Shoulders stacked above your hands, pressing through the right foot. Let's sweep the right arm high to the sky and then threading it under the body on the exhale. I always like to find with this thread to shift the left hand a little further forward, just giving yourself space to come all the way down. Inhale, we'll take the right hand high to the sky. Exhale, thread. One more time, breath in. And this one will hold three breaths. So we'll breathe in. Exhale. One more breath. Sweeping the right arm high to the sky. We'll bring both hands down to the floor. We'll start to walk them around towards the front of the mat, just briefly through a half split, turning the right toes back, square the hips, inhale, and dropping forward on the exhale. Spine stays long, reaching high towards the big toe. Round through both hands, sliding the right foot back into tabletop. Hands ground, elbows begin to drop out to the sides of the room, chest and chin lower to the mat. And being an extension through the spine as you lift and open into baby cobra, flattening the tops of the feet, flatten the hips, roll shoulders back. Big toes together, knees wide, child's pose as the hips sit back towards the heels. And then returning to your downward facing dog. Inhale, toes tuck. Exhale, press the hips back. Neck completely relaxed, crown of your head dropping down, lengthen through the spine, press the floor away, perhaps even taking a little scoop of the tailbone up towards the sky. Left leg floats, breath in. Left foot steps through between the hands, exhale. Right knee lowers, toes stay tough, arm scoop. Cactus arms, exhale. Reaching them out wide. Side bend to the left, left hand comes down, right hand overhead. Strong through the legs, keep them squared and level. We'll take both hands high to the sky and taking them to either side of the front foot. We'll be then begin to walk around the right side into our side plank. Swivel on the right leg, extend the left. Ground your back hand. Reach to the sky. So hips pressing forward, lengthen through the top of the body, maybe floating top arm overhead. Use the core to bring yourself up through center to your gate pose as we open through the opposite side of the body. All the way back up through center. And into our gate twist, we'll bring the hands down. This time we'll lift left arm high to the sky. And we're threading under the body on the exhale. Sweeping to the sky, breath in. Exhale. Breath in. Exhale, hold for three breaths. And then left thumb reaching to the sky. Both hands coming on the shoulders. As we walk around towards the front of the mat, briefly through a half split, Ardha Padmanasana. Square through the hips, they're directly above the right knee. Left toes drawing back, 
fold them forward and you take that little scoop of the tailbone through the pelvis bring a more sensation through the back of the left leg. We'll grab through the hands, we'll slide the left leg to the back of the mat. Option for tabletop, or maybe you're pressing to your high plank this time, tucking the toes and pressing the floor away. So the pelvis, we give the tailbone a tuck under the body, almost like you're trying to bring the top of the hips towards your lower ribs. It will get that flexion there through the abdomen. The shoulders, they're pressing forward, so protracting and trying to lift the spine up between the shoulder blades. Either lowering through knees, chest and chin from your high plank or we can shift body weight forward, shoulders over fingers, gently bend, slowly bending into the elbows, they brush and hug into the side of the ribs or hold that low plank position, keep the flexion through the abdomen, breathing in, hold for your exhale, then we'll lift and scoop into the baby cobra or your upward facing dog. Nice and proud in the heart opening, lift and open through the heart space, engage through the core. If you're in your upward facing dog, we're lifting the thighs, leaning back and down the facing dog on the exhale. And from down the facing dog, small steps all the way through to the hands, rag at the front of the mat, slide bend through the knees, dropping forward over the legs. Option and then to take hold of the elbows and sway from side to side. Arms, chin to chest, slowly rolling through each of the vertebrae one at a time into your mountain pose, Tadasana. Head and shoulders rise, shoulders rolling back and down. Arms face forward, alignment through hips, core, and the lower rib. Arms sweep up and overhead, gaze towards your thumbs while we keep this engagement through the abdomen. Uttanasana folding forward, exhale, straight legs. Take a breath in, press through the feet, lift the hips. Exhale, navel draws to the spine, continue to fold forward. Breath in, reach heart towards the big toes. Relaxing your neck, crown of the head drops down, exhale. One more breath at Uttanasana, hips shifting forward, even weight through the feet. Dropping forward, exhale. Out of Uttanasana, half lift, hands slide up, shins, slowing through spine, roll shoulders back. Hold here for the exhale, check the hips are travelling forward, even weight through the feet. Hands lower down to the mat. Left leg slides all the way back, slight bend in the knee, arm sweep to the sky, high lunge. Maybe you'll stay steady in your high lunge or we can add a little bit of movement on the exhale, we can bend more into the left knee and cactus the arms. So we're hovering off the floor and then on the inhale we'll straighten through both legs and reach high. Exhale, breath in, we'll do that for three more times, exhale, inhale, exhale, breath in, last one down, and then all together, inhale, straight through legs, reach out through tips of fingers, taking that to warrior two, swiveling the back foot, opening the hips, Arms coming down to your shoulder height. We're checking that the outside edge of the back foot presses into the floor, the arches of the feet are lifting, squeeze them together, feel the glutes engage and squeeze on, pull the knees back, maybe you can just gently pressing the hips through the legs, arms reaching out, gazing over the middle finger of both hands in line. And then from here we'll flip the front palm, reverse the warrior inhale. Back into this very familiar side bend where we're contracting through the left side to bring more length through the top line. Lunge stays deep through your warrior. We'll take a reverse warrior to extend its side angle. Right forearm comes down to the front thigh. Left arm swoops past the body, extending all the way through the left line of the body. So from the foot all the way through the tips of the fingers with the palm facing down. We can use the right hand to check that Pelvis, abdomen, and lower rib engagements, the lower rib drawing in. Nice and light on the bottom hand, perhaps even floating it out in front of the body and reaching. 
And you're taking the right arm out in front of the body, become more aware of the engagement, maybe even feeling those glutes engage a little bit more, more activation through the core. We're floating the right arm, we'll bring it back to rest on the right side. And two, that's a sasana side plank, even supported or full side plank. Left hand grounds, give it a twist into the mat. So support it, would lower the left knee and slide the right leg back for a full side plank. We roll onto the blade edge of the back foot and stack in both feet. Contract through the underside of the body, lengthen through the top. Top arm reach into the sky. So start to twist the left hand into the floor, maybe beginning to draw shoulder blades back and opening the heart to the sky. Bring both hands back down to the floor. Float the right leg high into a three-legged dog. And bring the right knee to the back of the right tricep. Squeezing in. Take it high to the sky, three-legged dog. And bring it under the body to the back of the left arm. A little bit of a twist all the way in. Back into three-legged dog. And to your tiger curl, knee through the chest or forehead. Hold here for a breath in, holding for the exhale. Let's do one more round of those with the option to add a push-up. Right leg high to the sky, bring it to the outside of the right tricep, holding there or bending to the elbows, bring the chest to the earth, press it all the way back up. Three-legged dog. Tucks under the body to the back of the left tricep, hold here or bend into the elbows and then press them back up. Send it high, three-legged dog. A little bit hard to do under the body, so instead we'll just draw it through to the chest or forehead. Hold, three-legged dog. And then you're taking that through your flow, or straight back to downward facing dog. And downward facing dog. We'll make our way to the front of the mat, step jump, we'll float the feet towards the hands, halfway lift, fold and forward, and then rise to standing, arms sweeping overhead. Uttanasana, folding forward, exhale. Adha Uttanasana, halfway lift. Right leg slides to the back of the mat, slide bend through the knee, arms sweep into the sky. Holding here steady in the lunge, all for five breaths, bending the back knee, cactus arms. Inhale, exhale. Breath in, exhale. Inhale, two more times. Last one. So all together, we straight through the legs, reach the fingers high. Exhale, warrior two. Checking the engagement through the feet, the hips, the core, open through the arms, gazing down the middle finger, flipping the palm, reverse warrior, inhale. And take a few breaths. Extended side angle, left forearm to the thigh, Right arm swoops down, forward, up and overhead, palm facing down. Checking that the lower ribs, drawing in. Nice and light on the left arm. Option to shoot the left arm out in front of the body. Left forearm comes back to rest on the thigh, right hand to the floor, earth, spread the fingers wide, that's your stars in a side plank, your choice supported or your full side plank, stacking the feet, contract through the other side of the body, lift the hips, sweep the top arm to the sky. Holding here, or we'll twist the right hand more into the mat, draw the shoulders back, maybe opening the chest up to the side. Both hands come down to the floor, left leg high, three-legged dog. 
So first it's left knee to the back of the left tricep, and then three-legged dog centered high. Left knee cross under the body to the right, three-legged dog. Tiger curl, knee to chest or forehead, hold, squeeze, three-legged dog. Second round, we add the push-up. Left knee to left tricep, hold and squeeze, or bend to the elbows. Press it all the way back up, three-legged dog. Under the body, back of the right arm, hold, squeeze, or press, up. Take it through to chest or forehead, hold, and extend. Take that through your flow, or straight to down facing dog. From downward facing dog, we'll foot right leg high to the sky, breathing in. Stepping the right foot through between the hands, exhale. High lunge, arm sweep. Warrior two, exhale. Flip and reverse warrior breath in. Extended side angle, forearm the thigh, right or left arm overhead. Second time through the side angle, holding here. You can extend through the arm, or maybe lower. The right arm down to the inside of the front leg. So we just check if we're moving to a deeper version of this posture, the activation through the lower body, the continued rotation of your heart towards the sky. There's also the bind, weaving the bottom hand underneath the front leg, top arm comes up and over the back, and again the heart keeps rotating high to the sky. Taking a bind, we can release from the bind. The floats the left arm overhead. If we take this back into side plank, left hand grounds, rolling over, stacking or taking a supported side plank. A little bit different this round, so you're not remaining in the shape that you're in. But we can float the right leg high to the sky. Nice and slowly, perhaps bending the knee. And stepping back into wild thing, right foot grounds, hips lift, shoulders squeeze back, reaching overhead. We'll bring both hands back down onto the mat, right leg high to the sky, three leg dog, drawing it under the body to the back of the left tricep, fallen triangle, extending the leg, and lifting the left arm to the sky. So see contraction and lifting the hips, opening through the top of the body, top arm reaching in the head. And bring both hands back down to the floor. Let's send the right leg high to the sky, three-legged dog. And then step the right foot to the outside of your right hand, left foot to the outside of the left hand, malasana at the front of the mat. Palms press, elbows draw back, collecting the knees, opening through the hips, broadening through the shoulders and collarbones, lots of length through the spine. So remember, you can always modify your squatting position, either sitting on a prop, or another nice option is just to lift out of the squat slightly and bring forearms to the tops of the thighs. I'm going to add a twist into Malasana, bringing the right hand to the floor, tricep to inner thigh, left hand. Floats to the sky. Now think about length as well as the rotation here. Lifting the heart, drawing the left shoulder back. Left hand comes to the floor. Tricep to the thigh, right arm to the sky. Right hand comes down, both hands pressing into the earth. Start to straighten through the legs as you heel toe your feet together, taking a half lift. Folding forward, exhale. Into chair pose, bending through the knees, hips lower back, arms sweeping to the sky. Knees drawing back just far enough to see the toes. The option then to also tuck the tailbone, draw the belly button in, and squeeze the shoulders back more. Inhale, reach up through tips of fingers. Exhale, maybe take the chair a little bit deeper through the length. Breath in. 
and deep into your exhale. Two more breaths. One more in. Straighten the legs, fold forward, exhale. Half lift. So we're working a little bit more strongly through our flow. We can step jump back through our vinyasa. Option to press through the hands. Maybe give the feet a little tuck in towards the hips. Look, feet all the way back. And we move through our flow. Down the face and dog. And from down the facing dog, left leg high to the sky. Left foot steps through between the hands. High lunge. Warrior two. Flip and reverse with a breath in. Extended side angle. Forearm to thigh, right arm over head. Holding your side angle or float the arm out in front of the body. Bend the option. And lower the left arm to the inside of the front leg. Spin the heart to the sky. If this space is there for you, taking your bind, flop arm over, forearm arm weaving under. And if you've taken a bind, we'll slowly release. Right hands over the head. Massive starts on the side plank, around the head, stack the feet, squeeze and lift. Then the option to float the left leg. Hold here. If you work into wild things, slowly bend the top knee, ground the foot, lift the hips, squeeze the shoulders, and reaching in the head. Fallen triangle, hands returning to the mat, left leg to the sky, left knee to right tricep and extends out to the opposite side. We switch the weight on the hands, through the left hand, right arm overhead. Lift, squeeze, hips high. Both hands coming back to the mat, left leg high to the sky. Left foot steps to the outside of the left hand, right foot steps to the outside of the right hand. Returning to Malasana. From Malasana, we can take Pro Pose Setup or moving straight into the arm balance. Pro Pose Setup is grinding through the hands, and we can just take a rocking motion, bringing the weight through to the tips of the fingers, and then use the fingertips to press heels back to the floor. If you're moving into the full balance, knees to triceps, shift the shoulders over fingers, squeeze the heels up towards the glutes, hug everything in. We'll be here for four breaths. Inhale, exhale. Breathing in, exhale. Two more breaths. Last inhale. And then with control, step jump or float the legs back of the mat. Moving through your vinyasa. Straight back to downward facing dog. Right leg high to the sky. Right foot steps through between the hands. Let's lower the left knee, keeping the toes tucked. Arms sweep into the sky. Palms press, prayer lowers the heart. Lift heart towards prayer. We'll take a twist to the right. A gentle twist, left hand to the knee, right hand to the sacrum, and twist. A deeper twist is to keep the palms pressing together, triceps to the thigh. Belly button draws in, we're creating that support and space to twist. Counter rotating the hips opposite direction. If the back toes are tucked, there's also the option to start to lift the left knee off the mat. Open wings, or maybe even reach for a bind. Two more breaths. Take in a bind, or release the arms. Press the palms together at the heart. Lift the prayer through center. 
opening into a wide leg standing position so facing the left edge of the mat. Heels wider than toes. Lengthen with a breath in, hinge from the hips, halfway down. Take another inhale at halfway, and then continuing to fall forward, exhale. Even weight through the feet, hips shift forward, spine long, the neck begins to relax and drop down. Walk hands under the shoulders to lengthen through the spine, like a halfway lift. And we have the hips directly above or in line with where the heels would be. Bring the right hand directly below your gaze. We're going to take the left hand to the back of the hips. So it's resting on the hips as we add the twist to just make sure that we're rotating through the torso and the hips stay level. So begin to draw the left shoulder to the sky and just assessing the hips position. If they're steady, there's an option to lift the left arm towards the sky. And then left hand comes back down. Lifting your right toes and point them towards the front of the mat. Start to walk the hands around towards your front foot, so that's the right foot. And we're setting up the triple nasana. Both hands can stay down and can begin to float the left arm towards the sky. And we'll feel the glutes here, squeeze and engage, press through the feet, lengthen through the torso, draw the shoulders back. A slight bend into the right knee and both hands come down to the inside of your right foot. And actually, actually framing up the front foot so we'll take the hands either side so we can step the left foot between the hands also. So here we're going on tips of the toes and we can walk both hands around to the outside of the right leg. And we're going to hold here in a deep squat twist, we can float the right arm to the sky. Now, if you'd like to play the side pro, it's going to do a little breakdown here. There's two different ways to set up the arms for side pro. One version is to take the hands sort of in this perpendicular space. So you can see here, feet are facing towards the camera, but my fingers are facing off to the other side of the room. Now this is okay for a beginning setup. It allows the hips to rest on the back. Uh, tricep and the knee on the front, but it's only giving us a little bit of twist through the torso. So you can see if I move into a deeper version of side pro, I'm going to take my feet and hands to all point in the same direction. So now I'm not only getting twist, there's a strong flexion through the abdomen and that supports you as you shift over onto the tricep and float the legs. And you also see that right arm, there's absolutely no weight on that at all. It's all on the left side. So we're going to hold here. You might even like to then play with extending up through the legs into a Kuninasana one. And wherever you like to go, we'll hold for the next three, and two, and then one. Bring the feet back down, walk the hands either side of the legs. We'll press a little into the hands to ground the feet, taking a halfway lift. Hold them forward. Chair pose, knees bend, arms sweep into the sky. Five breaths, each exhale deep into the chair. Inhale, exhale. Breath in, exhale. Two more breaths. Last one. Straighten legs, fall forward, exhale. Halfway lift. Taking it through slow, let's meet back, down facing the The left leg to the sky, left foot steps through between the hands. We'll start with the back knee lowered and the toes up. Arms reach high. Arms press, prayer lowers the heart. Inhale. 
taking your version of the twist. Either right hand to the knee, left hand to the back of the hips, or deeper, palms press, tricep to thigh, left elbow high. Belly button draws in, counter rotate through hips. Option to drive through the back toes into a high twisted lunge. Might even like to spread the arms wide. Or taking your bind. The bind's quite deep. You need to big exhale to create space to weave the right arm under and the left hand behind. Take in the bind, we'll release, press the palms together, up to the center of the heart space, opening to the right side of the mat, heels wider than toes, folding forward from the hips, exhale, take a breath in, and then continue to fold forward. And the second time through, our wide leg standing forward fold. You might like to hang out here, dropping the body down. If there are other modifications or versions of this posture, you can take binds around the feet or finger hands interlaced over the head. Also the option for your tripod headstand. The hands and shoulders, shoulder width distance apart, crown of the head softly touching down, legs floating up and overhead. Wherever you go, three breaths. Taking an inversion, legs wide, feet lower back down to the mat. We'll press ourselves up, releasing the hands to the floor, walking them under the shoulders into your half leg. Left hand directly below your gaze, right hand onto the back of the hips. Hips stay squared and level as the right shoulder begins to twist towards the side. Right hand can stay on the hips or floating overhead. Hands coming to the floor, lifting the left toes, point them towards the front of the room, and walk the hands around, Trikonasana. Both hands coming down as you soften into the left knee. So we're framing up the left foot and step the right foot through to the front of the mat. Toe tips in a deep squatting position. Hands then walk around to the left side. So option one might just stay in the twist. You're bringing the knee or the thigh onto the back of the tricep as you reach the left arm to the sky. If you're taking side crow, there's two options. Fingers can point towards the short side of the mat. Or you can bring the fingers and toes in line. And so bending into the elbows, we're shifting the shoulders forward and allowing the feet to float. Then the option to extend and open through the legs. We'll hold here for three, and two, and one. If you're in a balance, feet come back down to the mat. Then I bring sit bones to the floor. Lengthen through the spine, lift the heels of the feet, reach the arms out, and the basana start to float the shins up to parallel. Squeeze the knees and thighs in tight towards the chest, maybe starting to point through the toes and extending through the legs. We'll take our high boat to a low boat as we start to flatten the lower back to the mat. Head, shoulders, and heels stay floating. We're going to flatter through the feet for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, hold. Maybe reach the arms overhead. 5, 4, 3, 
to and then relaxing back onto the mat. So our core is fired up and ready for our back bends in bridge, bending your knees, feet and knees equal distance apart, heels close enough to brush with the fingertips. Slightly drawing the navel in towards the spine, just create that support through the lower back. As we tuck the tailbone, lift one vertebra at a time, all the way up as the hips lift into your bridge. Shoulder blades moving back and down, chin tucked in. Hands can release either side of the body or interlacing the fingers and pressing the fists down into the mat. Hold here for another three breaths. One more inhale, release the hands if they're interlaced. And with the exhale, one vertebrae at a time rolls all the way back down until the hips touch down. Feet walk as wide as the side of the mat and knees drop in towards each other. Two breaths. Take a second round, keep the knees back to the hip width distance, heels close enough to brush. Belly button draws in, core engaged, tailbone tucks, hips lift all the way up each vertebrae to the shoulders, shoulders walking back and down. Arms round either side, or interlace the fingers. Holding here in your bridge, or you can begin to press through the left foot as you draw the right knee towards the chest. Maybe extend the right leg high to the sky. And we can bring the right foot back down to the mat. Take a moment to adjust the weight through the feet. Over to the right side, left knee to chest. Take the next step. Left foot comes back down to the mat, holds, release the hands if they're interlaced. Rolling through the vertebrae, hips touching down, soles of the feet together, knees drop open wide. So before we move into our third round, I'll just give you a little demonstration of an option of where you can take this third cycle through. I'm going to start in the bridge, but this time as the hips elevate and lift, I'm going to bring the heels of the hands underneath the sacrum. Fingers are wrapped around the side. So very similar to the single leg lift, we'll draw one knee in and maybe the other joints. At this point, I'll just need to give the hips a little lift to switch the grip and have the fingers are pointing down towards the glutes, and I can extend the legs up into shoulder set. So once you're in your shoulder stand, or perhaps you're still in bridge, I'll guide you through. We can come over to plow pose. And then we reverse the motion, shoulder stand, switch the grip, knees coming down, one leg at a time, returns to bridge, and we'll all meet back in bridge. So we're starting reclining on the back, soles of the feet to the floor, feet and knees hip width distance apart, belly button draws in. Scoop the tailbone, lift the hips, roll up for each vertebrae. So you can hold your bridge. It's also the option to take the supported bridge either with a prop or you can use the hands just as I demonstrated, bringing the palms of the hands underneath the hips. So if you're moved into this shape and you'd like to take it to shoulder stand, we draw one knee in towards the chest. Find that balance where the left leg or the other leg can join. So once the legs have lifted, Switch the grip on the hips and extend the legs to the sky. Now, the whole time your gaze is directly up towards the ceiling or towards your toes. If you're in shoulder stand and would like to take that to plow pose, hinging from the hips, slowly lowering toes over head. Take our plow 
back up to shoulder stand, bending into the knees, switching the grip on the hips, gently bringing one leg at a time back down into the bridge. Remove the hands all together, rolling down for each vertebrae, hips lower back to the mat. And this time we'll add a rock from left to right with the knees sweeping into the left, sweeping into the right. Extending your legs out along the mat, hands come either side of the body, either pressing or hugging to the side of the body or you can bring the glutes to just sit roughly in about the thumbs or the tops of the wrists. Pressing the palms of the hands, forearms and elbows down into the mat, into fish, lifting the sternum high to the sky, maybe shifting onto the crown of the head to open your throat. Three exhales through an open mouth. and then releases and flattens out. I'm going to re-bend your knees, feet coming flat to the floor. I'm going to cross the right ankle over the top of the left thigh and begin to draw the toes of the right foot back towards the knee, figure four. You might stay here if you'd like to draw the knees in towards the chest, keep the shoulders glued to the earth, taking hold of either the back of the thigh or towards the shin. You can even use the right elbow here to gently guide your hip to open. the left leg, the option to unbind or to continue to twist the legs over themselves. I'm going to just shift the hips towards the right slightly to twist over to the left. Right shoulder stays glued to the mat. Turn from the center, unravel, bringing your hips back to the center of the mat, realigning the spine, and this time we'll take the left ankle over the top of the right thigh. Toes are drawing back. If you'd like to reach through, we're taking hold of the thigh or the shin, melting the shoulders back into the mat. Left toes drawing towards the knee. Maybe the left elbow gently pressing into your inner thigh. to unbind or to continue to twist the legs together. This time the hips need to shift towards the left as you take your twist towards the right.
legs return to the center, unravel, hugging knees, realign the spine and hips, take any final movements, adjustments or postures that you would like to move through before we release and surrender into our final resting shape, Shavasana with legs extended. Arms down by your side, palms turned up and shoulders slightly drawn back. Remaining in stillness as you become aware of the breath through the body. Let's start to awaken Ida Nadi, which is the left side of the body, just little movements through your left fingers and toes. In Gala Nadi, your right side, movement through the right fingers and toes. Sishamna Nadi, the central channel, extending the legs, point through the toes, sweep your arms up and overhead, inhale, open your mouth, side and release, harden your knees in towards the chest, giving yourself a squeeze, a little rocks from left to right, and we'll take our roll over onto the right side, And making your way up to a seated position. And once you've returned to a seated position, perhaps just bringing awareness to your central channel and your spine, back to that little quote or that message at the beginning of the class, that sense of that we're only as old as our spine feels, and how does your spine feel after you twisted and bent from side to side, laterally, forward and back. Movement is the medicine for the spine, the support from your core, opening the arms up wide as they sweep up and overhead, 
then pressing the palms and the hands together, and allowing your prayer to lower, passing through the crown of your head, your third eye, through the throat, and the rest of the heart. Or bowing forward, or completing this class by saying to ourselves and each other, Namaste.